What's up everyone? Me and my secretary here at Everything EOS, we've been fielding a lot of questions lately about what the latest update is on the Everything EOS developer courses. Everything EOS and our sponsor Cypherglass want to give you access to the knowledge you need to build great projects on EOSIO. So I figured today would be as good of day as any to give an update on that and then offer you guys a full glimpse into one of our 30 lessons. So as part of this update, I just want to let everyone know that the courses are still on track for the end of April. These courses are going to be the absolute best for onboarding new developers onto EOS IO. Throughout this course, you're going to go from zero knowledge to a fully functional DAP, and hopefully from there, you'll hit the ground running for a decentralized application of your own. So if you're sick of hearing me talk and looking at my cats getting all uncomfortable, stay tuned for your first preview of a lesson from the Everything EOS developer courses. Whether you slogged through those introductory lessons, smoothly sailed through them, or just skipped them because you're an experienced programmer, in this lesson we actually get started on building our EOS DAP. We're going to install EOS Studio and then poke around and see how it works. By the end you'll know how to spin up a local network, create accounts, and test smart contract actions. Here we go. You're going to install something called EOS Studio. Now there is command line EOS, Cleos, and uh, various software you can run that EOS Studio will run behind the scenes. If you want to learn command line, you can. But I knew about EOS Studio for a long time, ever since their Telegram had a couple of dozen members. And as soon as Dan Larimer tweeted out that it was a great project, I knew that I just had to make the switch. It's going to save us gobs of time. I think you should learn command line, you should learn how to work those things, but in the interest of being able to jump right into development, we're going to use EOS Studio. We're also going to be using something called Visual Studio Code. The reason being that for our front end, we're going to be writing in something completely different. Our back end, our smart contracts, will be in C++, but our front end will be in JavaScript using technologies called Node on the server side and React on the client side. So to kind of keep our, our methodology straight and, uh, you know, have two different modes of thinking, one JavaScript front end and one EOS smart contract C++ back end, we're going to use two different IDEs plus EOS Studio, while it has some great features for testing and things, it doesn't have support yet for developing on Node React. We'll set up EOS Studio first, go over to eostudio.io and uh, select the version of EOS Studio you need. If you don't know how to install programs on your home computer, you're probably in the wrong class. Since I'm on a Mac, I'll just drag it into applications here. And as soon as you start that up, EOS Studio will actually help you install the rest of the tools you need. So I'll go ahead and install Docker. It actually takes me to this uh, Docker desktop site where we need to install Docker for Mac or Windows. If you're running on Linux, there are instructions right on the Docker site. But if you're not, you can go ahead and download right here. I'll download Docker for Mac. This is actually the worst part of the whole installation. I've got to log in to download. Uh, so I'll log in with a Docker ID that I have. And uh, you might have to create an account if you don't have a Docker account. And then it will let me finally get Docker. I'll save the Docker image. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and do the same thing. Install it as usual. And then Docker is installed. Now we head back to EOS Studio. And uh, EOS Studio will tell us Docker's installed. It knows right away. You hit Start Docker. This will actually take uh, a little while. Uh, Docker will open up and you can see the little Docker symbol uh, with a little thing that says Docker desktop is starting will appear up in your taskbar. And once Docker starts up from there, it's pretty straightforward. You just have these three checkboxes. They'll say install, you click them. They should just install right away. If something goes wrong, go ahead and reach out to the EOS Studio team in their Telegram, the EOS Studio support Telegram, and they'll help you out. All installed EOS, EOS, the CDT, which is the Contract Development Toolkit. You can actually go ahead and click to, to see where it's getting these from if you really want. Uh, and also some system contracts, which will be helpful if we want to uh, do things like deploy tokens, things like that. So once all these prerequisites are installed, just let's just click Get Started. So let me give you a quick rundown here of EOS Studio, of the interface. You'll see I have a, uh, a contract open right now, EOS Token. We won't be working with that during this tutorial, but we will be working with it in future tutorials and future developer courses because it's very common. All right, so uh, I have that open right now. And here is where I do all my coding. You'll notice that there are four 
uh, bars up at the top that can become purple when I click on them. These are the four sections of the software. The first one is where I develop my code and I can drop tabs here to see what projects I've worked on in the, the recent past. Uh, I write files here, I can open a whole structure, you know, I can open C++ files. We can build them when we're done. We can like check errors down here at the bottom right. Right now there are no errors. Like I can build EOS token. I'll go ahead and introduce an error here. Um, go ahead and hit build and uh, it'll build for you. It gives you a uh, errors if there are any. In this case, there are 19, uh, all because I deleted one letter <laughs> in this include. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and reinstitute that. So we can build contracts. We can debug contracts to a certain extent, and we can deploy contracts from here to our local net, uh, test net, or even the EOS main net once they're successfully built. Right now the build is successful. There are a couple of warnings. We don't have to worry about those. I'm gonna drag this window down because I don't really want it there. We can uh, test contracts here too, which uh, that lets us initialize test frameworks. You might be familiar with this kind of stuff. If you're not, no worries. In fact, we're not even gonna do this in this particular course. We will definitely use it in the future. Uh, you can name a bunch of project settings. Again, even though EOS Studio makes things a lot easier, there are the options you need to do whatever you could do on the command line. So before we go to the second and third sections, let's go to the network section, because I actually have to spin up a network before we can interact with contracts and accounts. Over here on the network tab, you can manage your local EOS IO installation. Right now I have version 1.52 installed. I can install a bunch of other versions. I'm actually going to do that today. And uh, there's also the CDT, which is the Contract Development Toolkit. So since I've did the first recording, a lot of stuff has come out. I'm gonna go ahead and add EOS IO 170, install that. And so you can install new versions very easily. It'll run through here, give you some information you need in case you want to debug. Great, we're already up, cool. Uh, now I can also click settings here and set some settings that I would like to have. I always go in here and check this one right here, verbose HTTP errors. That just gives you some more information if there's an error. I like to always have it checked. There's not really a downside to having it checked on a local net. You can manage some plugins, which again, we're not gonna need this time. And uh, you can do things like clear everything in the blockchain if you need to. Let's say you spin up a local game, you fill it with tables of information, and then you wanna start from a clean slate, you can do that here. Um, but make sure that if you do it, you then go in and uncheck the box, or you'll be deleting everything every single time. So let me go ahead and start up our local EOS here. You see a bunch of commands coming up, and uh, there we go. It's now running. We can uh, see how it's producing blocks. If you see over here, produce block. Uh, we're in only at block 13. Every half second, a block's produced. As soon as you hit transactions to the local net, they'll be added to blocks. Right now, of course, we have zero transactions. Um, if we wanted to, under network, we could go and drop down. We could switch from our local net to deploy our contract on a test net which is a place to test your EOS applications uh, with assets that are not valuable. You can get free EOS there, usually called SIS, and test your contracts without actually putting any value at risk. We can also deploy on the mainnet here, and I've done this before, it works great. For this entire course, we're going to only develop locally. Future courses, we maybe deploy things to mainnet, but it would take some resources for you to deploy the game we're gonna build to mainnet, so it doesn't make any sense to do that, especially since you can't monetize it very well. So now that we have a local net going, we can interact with contracts on that net. Right now, I think the only contract we actually have is EOSIO. We can see what things we can do with EOSIO, like setting new accounts, updating auth, things like that. And that's, remember, that's on the local net. So you can update uh, keys, update accounts, whatever here, that doesn't affect mainnet EOS at all. So right now, if I go over to accounts, the EOSIO token account doesn't even exist. Let's go ahead and create one. I go up to accounts in the top menu bar, hit manage key pairs, and you can see the key pairs here that I've imported. This 6MR key pair 
This is very important to import into your EOS Studio because it's the development key. It's what allows you to use the EOS IO account. This is a publicly known key pair, so don't use it for anything on EOS mainnet, all right? Because all of your funds will be stolen, all of your things will be taken from you because everyone knows this key. This is only for local development. Here I've also imported another key that I made somewhere else. You can go ahead and use any tool, EOS Toolkit, online, whatever, to create a new key pair. Now remember, this is just for testing. You don't have to worry about it being secret and safe as long as you don't use it anywhere else but in your testing environment and you'd never send EOS to it. There's a number of tools on EOS Authority. Let's go ahead and type in key in the search box and you see there's a option that says generate an EOS private key pair. Now, I wouldn't recommend using this for your own EOS wallet or for your actual account on mainnet. It's just for testing. Again, remember everything we're doing is just for learning and testing. So let's click that generate an EOS private and public key, there they are. So if I go ahead and select and copy this private key and go back to EOS Studio, hit import new key and paste that private key in here, it shows me that that's the private key for the public key 6LBC. All right, now this is available, 6LBC. And now EOS Studio knows how to sign transactions on the behalf of this key pair. You see that's the right key over at EOS Authority. Okay, so let's, I'm going to close out EOS Authority. We're going to head back over to EOS Studio. Now this public key is available. I've imported it here. If I lose it, no big deal. I just make another one because again, we're testing. Nothing has any value. I uh, can go up and create an account by clicking on the account bar, clicking create account. I can name my EOS account EOS token and paste in that public key. And now I have created an EOS IO token account. I refresh it, there's the account. It's got these keys for its permission. It's got a total balance of zero EOS right now. So I just created an account on my local testnet. That's how you do it. Now I can take the EOS token contract that I deployed, sorry, that I built just a little bit ago, and I can go ahead and deploy it to the EOS.token account. Okay, let me go ahead and select that. Deployed successfully. All right, now I have an EOS IO token contract as well as the original default EOS IO contract. I can do things like create new tokens here if I wanted to. Let's, uh, I can create a token that uh, EOS issues 1 million supply of PEAT because this has a precision of four, so this is four decimal places. Uh, that's 1 million PEAT were just created. I can have EOS issue them to you know some other account maybe that I've made, and uh, you know I want to issue this many peat, ten peat to Bob, and I can do that now. Uh oh, it says missing required authority. See the thing with EOS Studio is unless you go in here and change the authorization, the default authority that signs transactions is the current value shown up in the account bar. So let's switch to EOS IO and try that again. Uh, there we go. Except there's <laughs> And we get another error, right? Result error because the account does not exist. So I'll create an account again. I'll call it Bob, 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 and paste in a, a public key again. Now I've successfully created the account Bob, Bob. It just shows duplicate because I've, I've used this before. Now that Bob, Bob exists, I can run this transaction so there it is, it succeeded. I just issued some tokens to Bob Bob. Now here on this tab, I can also look at the current data for contracts that I have on the network. So you've seen me deploy the EOS IO token contract and uh, let's see what kind of tables it has. Accounts and stat, that's it. Accounts and stat. Stat shows me nothing, account shows me nothing. What's going on? Well, you actually have to enter the account you're looking up here in scope. Uh, we'll talk about scope in a minute, but if I search account uh, with scope, Bob, 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 I see that Bob has 10.0000 peat tokens now. So I could issue however many tokens to Bob, and now Bob can send them around. Let's say we have another account. I'll create another account called Alice Alice. There we go, there's now an Alice Alice account. If I have Bob selected, I can use this EOS token contract to transfer from Bob to Alice. A quantity of, let's say Bob wants to give her five of his Pete. All right, and uh, the memo, Bob says, hey Alice, what's going on? I run that, 
Boom. Transaction succeeded. What now does Bob have in his account? Only five peat. If we check Alice, though, we see that she now also has five peat. That's a quick rundown of the various tabs we will be using on EOS Studio. We'll be building our contract here on the left tab, on the network we deploy all the way over on the right tab, and then we will use the accounts we create under this tab to work with the contracts and test them here on this tab. Now, I want to point out that you can actually go to the main net and you can check out contracts. Like right now I have the Pixios one stake contract. I could actually import keys, which I'm, I'm not gonna do. I could actually do things here on Pixios. We can see what's been going on with the stake contract here. We can go ahead and you know stake or unstake some tokens, whatever. EOS Studio can be used to develop and test locally, on testnet, and on EOS mainnet. So now that EOS Studio is set up and you kind of have an idea of what's going on, we're going to take a look at its sample contract to start learning some smart contract concepts in the next lesson. There's no coding activity after this lesson, but you should try creating some accounts and maybe finding some contracts to interact with to familiarize yourself further with the EOS Studio interface. Next lesson, we'll start looking at the boilerplate contract that EOS Studio gives you and learn what everything in it means.